Good afternoon, everybody. I welcome you all to this video session. I am Mrs. Vernila, and today we are going to learn about the most common mis mistakes or errors made in English while speaking or writing. I hope this is a very interesting topic to all of you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be logging in at this time of the day in the afternoon at three o'clock. So, congratulations to all of you. Give yourself a pat because you are really a serious student. Want to know more about English? Want to speak correct English? You want to get a good placement? You want to travel across the world? So, whatever the reason may be, the reason for learning and speaking right correct English it may be anything see there are umpteen reasons because I have a student a 74 year old lady will you believe she's learning English on Skype she has been learning for the past four or five months you will be wondering what on earth this lady is going to do by learning English but she has her own list of reasons her daughter lives in the United States and she wants to go there that's every child's wish to bring the parents to where they are to present to them of what kind of lifestyle they are living it doesn't stop with that here in this case the daughter wants her mother to communicate or interact with her neighbors and friends there in the United States and you see the mother also at this age she has that urge or desire to learn at this age so this is a beautiful example of the saying age is never a bar it is only the spirit that matters you can learn anything at any age so learning a language is a very interesting thing we can make it fun and here we see English is spoken all over the world it is the official language in 53 countries of the world so not only for career see most of you who have logged in now you may be looking for a good job and people who are already in a job also they also want to learn more and more the communication skills so it's not only the career we are talking about it's also the entertainment side if you see if you want to go on a holiday on an international holiday with your family and friends you need to know the language and we see English as the common linking language otherwise you cannot have a great holiday you, you want the other person to understand what your needs are. So it helps in both the ways, the serious side, the education or the career side, and also the entertainment side. And also, when watching a good English movie, you don't want to always look at the subtitles. And what happens when you look at the subtitles, you don't focus much on the face of the actor, and you miss out on the expressions. So you need to look at the face the every expression only then it adds beauty to the experience of watching a movie and we always see both sides of life are equally important the, the serious and the lighter side and this is what is the wise side I want you if you have a notebook or a piece of paper with you it would be better if you write your own reason of why you want to learn and speak correct English the reason may be different for everyone but it is still a reason and I want each one of you to be very clear on that because that is what is going to push you at every stage of this course because it is not going to stop here every there's always room for improvement and we have a beautiful saying which says the greatest room in the world is the room for self-improvement so nobody can say that I'm perfect I've learned everything even I'm in the learning process because it's natural for us we are not native speakers English is a foreign language and we tend to make mistakes that's okay but we cannot keep saying that always that it's natural to make mistakes we have to find ways of how to correct ourselves because speaking plays a very very important role to err is human I hope everybody is familiar with this quotation to err is human to forgive divine this is a famous quotation of Alexander Pope I would like to sum I would like to add something to it where we say to not to err is superhuman which is not possible and to keep making the same errors 
the same mistakes is subhuman we can say so it's natural to err but we have to find ways and means to correct our mistakes and going to the next part of why do you want to learn to the how part there's always the how it's not enough if we stop with the reason everybody has a dream everybody wants to do this that but how to go about it how to draw a road map to where you want to be that plays a more important role so how do we learn there are once again umpteen ways of doing it but i will just mention a few of the most popular ways of how we learn a foreign language it applies to english or any other language the best way to learn a language is by speaking it that's somebody's quote i don't remember the author though these are the words the best way to learn a language is by speaking it it may sound odd to you or strange to you because how are we going to speak it if we don't know the language at all but the reverse also holds true because you've seen some people the ottoman or even the uneducated the illiterate people who have been in the north they speak good hindi even though they are not able to read or write have you ever noticed the same applies to people who have come from the north to here to the southern part they pick up all the south indian languages though they don't know to read and write so how do they do it is only by speaking it so the first thing we have to do is to start speaking the language whatever it is see mistakes or not that is how we learn not only learning on language even cycling for example nobody rides the cycle in the most perfect way the first time he does it he's he he may fall down many times get hurt then he takes the effort to learn the art of cycling again that is how we do it so don't wait for a stage because i've seen many people say let me learn the basics first let me learn the rules of grammar then i will start speaking it doesn't happen that way it's, it's the opposite that is true we speak first we make mistakes then somebody corrects us that is more important is not enough if we speak and if there's nobody around to correct our mistakes what happens then we think that we are speaking correctly and then we go on making the same mistakes until there comes a stage where we uh, realize that this should have been done much earlier so that is how we do it we speak make mistakes and the best way to speak is to be see you can form a group four or five friends together read some stories because why i say stories is because stories is what some body finds interesting we cannot watch a serious news uh, piece on tv or read something very uh, dull and prosaic always remember to do something interesting which you like so stories is one common thing the fairy tales or even movies for that matter you can watch a movie and narrate the story of that movie to your friend in english so it comes with listening and then speaking one person among the group can narrate the story others can listen and you can take turns to do that only after listening and speaking comes reading and writing so that is more formal and it's not only we use the right words see using the right words is very important but more than that the pause in speaking that also plays a very important role for example look at this sentence woman without her man is nothing i think some of you would have heard of this so how will you read this sentence some of you can say woman without her man is nothing i don't have anything against the men it's only the language part we are dealing with now then the other way is woman without her man is nothing see how you see the pause in speaking also 
plays a very important role even in writing if you don't leave enough space this one is very famous it's either God is nowhere or God is now here so this space plays a very important role so in speaking the pause in writing the space everything matters you see now you see in these two examples we have not changed any word the words remain the same but it is the pause or the right use of punctuation marks that matters so there are so many things in our everyday conversation that we are not aware of first thing and sometimes we are aware of some mistakes that we make but then we keep on make, making those same errors so it comes only with practice we have to keep saying those sentences again for example we see there are certain words where we don't have the plural form separate plural form bring my luggages to the fourth floor can you find an error in this sentence we may have three or four suitcases travel bags so we tend to make this error of making this error so the word luggage doesn't have a plural form of luggages it is only luggage be it one suitcase or 10 bags so there are a list of words like this luggage then information is always this scenery Furniture, that's a very common error. You might have seen that on the boards. All kinds of furnitures available here. That's a big mistake we make. It's never furniture, it's only furniture. And see, when you learn a particular word, it's best to go and learn the rest. So these are only a few examples that I've given. There are many words, such words where we don't use, see, advice. Advice. And when I say advice, I'm reminded of another thing. You may wonder why do I write C? Because some of you may have seen yes there. Of course, both words exist. This is a noun, C, and this is a verb. I advise him. I don't like his advice. I advise him this advice as a verb. I don't like his advice. The pronunciation also differs. We think they are both the same. But here it is z and here it's z. advise, advice, advise, advice. Same way we have practice and practice. Often people tend to exchange these. This is a noun, this is a verb. Once again, as I told you, you have to go and look for the other sets of words which resemble this. And then we have common errors made in tenses. We use one for the other. Like for example, we started the class ten minutes ago. That's right. So whenever the time is mentioned, when a specific time in the past is mentioned, it is always the simple past tense. Never we have started. We should not say we have started the class 10 minutes ago. That is a wrong way of saying. So when a specific time in the past is mentioned, it's always the simple past. I have been working here for three years. So, have been working is the right form. It's not like I am working here or I work here because this is something that began in the past, still continuing and we do not know when that will end. 
So for all such actions, we prefer to use the present perfect continuous. It has been raining since yesterday. So it means it started raining yesterday and it is still raining and we do not know when the rain will stop. And there are some areas where we use the ing form where we are not supposed to use, especially in the present continuous, words like know, feel, think, I'm thinking. I'm thinking you're right. So what's wrong with this sentence? It is not the ing. So here, I think you are right. This is the right way. So this again, there's a long list. Feel, have, have is one word which is often misused. We say, I'm having this, I'm having that. She's having a car, a new car. Uh, he's having a great job. So have must not be used with ing if it indicates or denotes possession. Same way like all the verbs of perception, see, hear, smell, taste. So the lists go on and when we take the other sessions, we will go into detail the every aspect, the every area of where we normally make mistakes and how to correct them. So these are some of the things we don't even know they are mistakes. So the best way to correct them is to get hold of a good grammar book, listen to people, talk good English, and once again, speak them. So only when you speak, you know where you get stuck up, what word doesn't come to your mind. For some people, they say it is here, it is here, the word is here, it doesn't come out. So that comes only with more and more of speaking. And when two things are compared, we normally say the best. Which do you like, this or that? This is the best of the two. It is a common error, once again. This is the best of the two. When two movies are compared, or two dresses or whatever, it should be better. When two things are compared, it's only better. When more than two things are compared, we talk about the superlative or the best. He is the most intelligent boy in the class, we say. When two or more things are there. And when I'm talking about the degrees of comparison, I'm reminded of one more error, which is one of the most. Is one of the most. Once again, it is superlative. So it should be followed by a plural noun always one of the most memorable experiences we shouldn't say one of the most memorable experience actually what we mean by this is we are talking about one experience but of the many that's important we have many memorable experiences of them, we are going to talk about one. So still the meaning is singular, but the form you have to have the plural form there. One of the most memorable or one of the most beautiful memories. And this the also equally plays an important role. Always before a superlative, the article the is important. There's a whole lot of points to be learnt under this topic alone, the definite article. We call the the definite article. I hope you know the articles a, an and the. Of the three articles, this is the definite article. A and an are the indefinite articles. So there's a big chapter that revolves around the itself. And a uh, and in school days we would have learned 
to use and before vowels but it doesn't stop there it's not the vowels alone it's the vowel sounds it's not the vowel letters that matters so we say he works in an university do you find any mistake any error here of course it should be he works in a university though you find the letter u though it happens to be a vowel it is not a vowel sound it's a consonant sound see when you see the phonetics it goes like this u same way universe union all u sounds they don't begin with a vowel sound but if it is an umbrella it's okay it should be an umbrella here is an umbrella so here you though you find the letter u the sound is different from this here it's u here it's a so there's about and the reverse also where you don't find a vowel letter beginning an honorable man it is always an honorable man why because the letter h is silent so it begins with the next vowel sound so it is an honorable an honest wherever the first letter h is silent we use the article an and the other error also we say 400s 5000s which is wrong it is always 400 5000 or 6 million but you can say thousands of people hundreds of people attended the meeting thousands of people gathered that's right but if it comes as an adjective it is always thousand there are 400 people in the hall so it is not it is not hundreds but you can say hundreds of people that is okay hundreds of people attended again something to do with the plural i found a 100 rupee note again 100 it is this one is right not this we should not say i found a 100 rupees note never why because here we are talking about a single note it is singular though the value is different it is uh, and, and you also get the clue here it's a uh, so a uh, note it's a 100 rupee note but you can say i have 100 rupees that's different i have 100 rupees with me this is right i have a 10 year old son same way a 10 year old son it is never i have a 10 years old son not this same almost both the examples fall into the same category and you go to a restaurant you or you go uh, like three or four people together and you order for coffee you cannot say i want or we want four coffees never because coffee is an uncountable noun you can never add yes to coffee or tea or even water for that matter so it should be four cups of coffee so you add that yes to another word here four cups of coffee bring two glasses of water so we add the plural form to the cup or the glass 
not to the noun here because these are uncountable nouns and this another common error I prefer because when I talk about coffee I'm reminded of this I prefer coffee than tea what is the error the error lies here it is always to I prefer coffee to tea and not coffee than tea something that is related to this is the word superior and inferior he is superior to me she is inferior to me never than superior than or inferior than is wrong basically sometimes see the reason why we make mistakes is because some people then say I learned in my mother tongue till I was in my uh, class 12 then all of a sudden when I went to college then I found everything strange and knew everything was taught in English and then I couldn't understand I couldn't pick up so there are so many reasons people give but do you think they are valid reasons okay for some time you can keep saying that but not forever because I've seen some diligent hard-working students who put in a lot of effort you can't even believe that they've been from a different medium in school Tamil mediums students they some of them not all is always the, the minority not all those people who put in more effort they get rewarded so I couldn't believe when a boy said that he had done all his schooling in Tamil medium his accent was so good the pronunciation the tone the pause the way with which he speaks no you can't even believe that so it is possible for everyone to pick up the right word say it the right way ultimately if you see the purpose of communication is for the other person to understand or get what you say so when you say a word he shouldn't get the other word so that is where pronunciation also plays an important role and it always gives a very good impression if you speak the language perfectly well and there's never an end to learning and you see um, some uh, words see tear where bear some people may say we are beer or tear it's once again not the right way to pronounce so that is all also where we need to correct ourselves so you have to start reading more start listening more and start speaking more whatever you do do it more and more and in the next sessions we will focus on different aspects and now we can see some of the errors in prepositions prepositions though the topic may look very simple this is where most of us go wrong for example this is a very common error what is the time in your watch what is the time in your watch do you find any error here the, se the sentence or the question seems perfectly all right but still there is an error here it is by so I learned this for the first time when I was in school and I couldn't understand what could this mean how can it ever be what is the time by your watch why not what is the time in your watch because that looks correct but still this is right because time cannot be uh, different in each person's watch so by your watch it is this time by his watch it is this time but time itself is one and another common error in prepositions he is good in speaking so what is the error you find here again in the preposition is not in it is at he is good at speaking she is good at writing he is good at swimming so it is always good at something though this seems to be right this is the right answer and we confuse words like beside and besides they may look similar but there's a world of difference 
Beside means near. Please sit beside me. I would like to sit beside you. Beside means near. Besides means in addition to that. Besides learning French, I also like to learn Hindi. So besides in addition to that. Just an S added but entirely the meaning changes. In addition to and in prepositions we also have this error between and among when it is two people we say between we use between they fought between themselves whatever if it is two people or if it is more than two, it's a group of three or four people, it should be they fought among themselves, not between. And when I think of between, once again, another error comes to my mind, which I very often find in the invitation cards, the marriage invitation cards or any uh, other invitation for a meeting, where you mention the time. It's many people tend to make this mistake between three to four o'clock. What is the error? It is not two, it is and. Between 10 and 12, between 3 and 5, it is only and when you use between. Or if you want to use two, if you're so much attached to the word two, you forget between, but use from. From 10 to 12, from 3 to 5. So this is the pair between and. Now the next time you come across an invitation card please see if it is printed right or you can even go and give them a suggestion this is how it is but the fun here is the people at the printing press they will argue no 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 this is how it is I've printed thousands of cards and never has anybody told me about this but still if it's a mistake there's no there's nothing wrong in fighting for it so it's between and from two. And have you heard of the word despite? Despite. It means in spite of. So this one word is equal to in spite of. Which means you cannot use of with despite. In spite of the rain, we played. Or, despite the rain, we played. It is not despite of the rain, never. And another common error when we write leave letters or when we explain the reason as here is a conjunction, it's not a preposition. As, as I was not well, as I was not well, so I was absent. So what is the mistake here? We cannot use both together, as and so. The so is not necessary. We shouldn't. As I was not well, I was absent. Or, I was not well and so I was absent. It has to be either this or that, but not these two combined. Similarly, some people may use this way. Though I was sick, but I attended the class the same way. We cannot use both though and but together. It has to be this or that. Though I was sick, I attended the class. Or, I was sick, but I attended the class. You cannot combine these two. That's a major mistake I've come across, either in speaking or even in writing. When we look at the leave letters, you can see this common error.
And as we've already discussed earlier, this may have happened for so long a time where you wouldn't have had enough chances to improve your English, but it is up to you to grab every opportunity that comes your way. So you may watch a good video where the focus is on the language or even a movie where the English is, or even a cartoon show for that matter, where the conversational English is very good. Some years ago, we had this Naughty and Oswald on Pogo TV, or even Miffy, where very good English is spoken. Not only for English, as I said earlier, it's, it, it applies for any other language. When you want to learn a language, it's better you learn, you watch something where the conversational language is focused on. And forever we cannot um, look at the subtitles and there are movies where you have to watch it with every expression, not missing every, no, any second of it. And the good thing I always tell people is not to put a blame on people or circumstances. Or oh, this is how it is. I don't find that another major excuse that people say is, oh, where is the time for me to do all this? You are asking us to read story books and watching, uh, watch cartoon shows or movies and then narrate the story of a movie. Where do we have all the time for this? The wise man always finds time. And if you want to be successful, you have to find time or create time. Otherwise, everybody has got enough reasons to say, I don't have time, I don't have time. Everybody is equally busy. We have so many things to do. But if English or learning English is your priority, then you have to find ways and means to do it. Right. And coming back to the errors, the questions. See, why are you late? This is a common question. Now, this is the subject, this is the verb. See, in a sentence, we say a normal sentence, a statement, the subject comes first, the verb comes next. But in a question, it is always this way. We cannot say why you are late. That may be allowed in very casual, uh, spoken form among friends, but definitely not in formal circles. It is always this way. Why are you late? Why have you done this? Why have you not? It is not why you have done this. So here there's no problem. There's only one verb, the main verb. Here you see, there are two words. Though the verb is one, this is the main verb and this is the helping verb. And the subject is introduced or inserted between the helping verb and the main verb. It's never like why you have done this. And when the question becomes a part of the sentence, that is more important. I asked you why you have done this. There it's right. Why? Because there it is not a question. Please, please pay some attention to this part because some, this is something very important to be noted. There it is not a question. The question is going to form a part of a statement. I asked you. Now, even when you begin the sentence, you know it is a question and not a statement. You see, I, it doesn't begin with a question word. I asked you why you have or had done this. Here it's okay. You're here, this is how it should be. The subject comes first and then the verb because it is a statement or in other words, we say it's an assertive sentence. It is a normal statement. It is not a question. I don't know where his house is. We cannot say, I don't know where is his house. Where is his house is right because it is a question. Where is his house? Where is your book? But if you put that in a sentence, I do not know where his house is. I do not know how to find a solution for this. Or how you will find a solution for this. It cannot be, how will you find? I don't know 
where his house is. It is not the other way around. This is the subject and this is the verb. Why? Because this is a statement and not a question. Again, if it's a question, it should be where is his house? Is that clear? So I hope he, you are noting down all these sentences because nothing stays long in the memory. However great your memory can be, there's a saying, the palest ink is stronger than the strongest memory, which means however much you try to remember something, it may still fade away in your memory because it is natural. We are human beings. We come across so many experiences and situations, we tend to forget the older or the earlier experiences. So whenever you learn something, it's always advisable to note down things so that you can always go back and refer to them. And it's not only for yourself, you can also teach the other people around you from the notes that you have taken. Yes, okay. I think you have posted some questions. Is that so? Even otherwise, you are free to post some questions on this topic. Which grammar book to be followed for competitive exams? And the word grammar, please. It is grammar, A-R. Not E. <laughs> Not E-R. It's good that you typed it this way because, you see, because of one mistake that one person makes, so many people get a chance to learn. So the person who has done a mistake need not worry about that, right? You are always helping others. So I would always say begin with a Renan Martin grammar book, which is a beautiful book. Even though we have some other latest revised editions for beginners and even otherwise high school English grammar and composition by the authors Ren and Martin. Ren and Martin. I love the book. I've been reading the book from class 8. Still, I keep reading because there are so many things to learn. And it's not only the grammar aspects that you find there. The beautiful sentences from very good pieces of literature are given as examples. So you also get to appreciate the language better. And the second question, is there an easy way? Hmm, not an easy way. Is there an easy way to learn? to correct these errors. See, there's not going to be mm, like in the story of Cinderella where the stepmother comes, or waves a magic wand and then everything changes. The pumpkin changes into a carriage and the mice turn into horses. It happens only in fairy tales. I will say it, there's never an easy way. And what comes easy doesn't last. Everybody should know that. See, there's no harm in working hard to get something big. I mean, the rewards. So put in more hours of work. See, I'm just telling you the plain truth, not sugarcoating it. There's never an easy way to something big in life. Can I have a glimpse on unless? Yes, of course you have. You can. Unless. Unless you work hard. You cannot expect great results, which means if you do not work hard, see, this is the usage of unless, the negative meaning. Unless you work hard, you cannot get great results. It just means if you do not work hard, you cannot get great results. Unless it rains today, I will be there on time. What does it mean? If it does not rain today, I will be there on time. So unless has that meaning. Unless you pay attention to every detail, you will miss something important. Which means if you do not pay attention to every detail, you will miss something important. Any other question? Discuss subject verb agreement. Yes, that's a perennial topic. An interesting one, of course, and that is where 
many of us make mistakes there's nothing and there's no rocket science about it subject verb agreement it's a beautiful topic and it comes only with practice i can say see of all i we you and then he she it they all the personal pronouns like a rule we can say clearly for simple present tense for he she it we add yes to the verb he goes this is the simple present tense the subject is third person singular i hope you are familiar with a person if not see there's a first person second person third person first person singular is i plural is we second person singular is you plural is also you we have two different words in tamil we have two different words in hindi but in english it's the same even if it's one person that we are talking to it's you or for whole group of people also it's you second person singular is you plural is you third person it is he she it and for all of these it's they the plural plural of he is they plural of she is they plural of it is also they living and non living whatever it is differs from language to language in tamil it's not so in hindi is also it's different so in present tense if you take present tense alone because that is where you have to be very careful where it keeps changing past tense there's nothing to learn because all the seven subjects take the same verb i went we went you went he went she went it went or they went the went doesn't change but in present tense it's i go we go you go but when it comes to he it goes he goes she goes it goes and once again they go so we call these three words he she and it the third person singular it is where you have to add yes to the verb mm. the next question is can you explain common errors in usage of modals of course modals is a separate topic by itself and we need to focus more time on that i can simply say like uh, should and must they express obligation stronger in meaning than may and can may and can also have different levels of meaning they are used both for permission asking permission and then probability it may rain tomorrow which means there is a chance of it raining tomorrow may i go now there may is different it's asking or seeking for perm permission can i leave now can also expresses ability see modals we say can may will should must and then there's also the form ought to which is the strongest of everything you ought to listen carefully which means there's no other go there's no other option you ought to do it means it's your duty there's that's models and we normally change I mean instead of one model we use the other that is where the error comes in where the meaning has to be very strong if you use may then the entire meaning is lost you may you may attend the class means i'm not very particular about you attending the class it's your choice i leave it to you you may attend the class or not but if i say you should attend the class what do i mean i place a lot of emphasis or importance on the class you should attend it or you must attend it you have to attend it so all those three are different where to use has have and had also with been yes that is the present perfect tense has been or has been that that's a present perfect tense with the be verbs i have been to paris i have been to malaysia which means you have already been there had means again if we draw the timeline it goes back in time if this is the timeline and this is now this is some moment in the past has or have will come here recent or immediate past i have been to malaysia she has been to the uh, swimming class but if i say had 
some time back, before a certain moment in the past, I had been, I had known. So past perfect tense, this is present perfect tense. We will learn about that in detail when we uh, go into tenses. Once again, that's a very interesting topic. And anybody who has mastered tenses, I will say he has covered almost 60% uh, of learning English. We have 12 tenses. And why do we have 12 tenses? There's a reason. We cannot use one tense for the other. So we have to be very careful in using the tense. That is why we have so many tenses. So you will learn about that. Please discuss active voice and passive voice. That's again a very interesting point uh, to be made before we go into that. When do we use passive voice for that matter? Why to use passive voice at all? There are three reasons, three situations where we prefer to use the passive voice, where we do not know the doer of the action, who did it. Then when we don't want to mention the doer and when the subject or the doer is very well known for example he is elected the prime minister of a country if we say that is passive voice is elected is passive voice we don't say by whom because it's understood who elects the people so we don't say he is elected the prime minister of the country by the people we just leave it like that because it's understood we uh, don't say People elected him the Prime Minister. It's not wrong to say, but it's better to say he is elected the Prime Minister. She is elected the captain of the team. She is chosen to be the leader. So when the matter is more important than the doer of the action, when the action is more important than the doer of the action, we prefer passive voice. For example, uh, you wake up one day, you come out of your house and you see your bike is not there. What do you say? We don't say somebody has stolen my bike. We never say that. We shouldn't because it's not important at that time who stole your bike. What matters more is the action of your bike being stolen. So we say my bike has been stolen. Then uh, you go into different ways of finding out who the culprit is. So remember to use the passive voice when the action or the matter is more important, it's more significant. At that time, we don't uh, give importance to the subject, never. So these are the things we need to learn and master. It is at that time you appreciate the beauty of a language, why we have so many things. He ate a mango, a mango is eaten by him. There doesn't make much difference. But in cases like this, the passive voice plays a more important, a more emphatic role. Please explain about idioms and phrases. Ah, idioms. Mm, okay. Idioms and phrases are very interesting once again. Uh, in school days, we would have learned like, uh, why should anyone say uh, like he kicked the bucket? Means he died. So those are language, those are expressions. Idioms, I can define them as expressions peculiar to a language. Peculiar means very strange and odd. So kicking the bucket means entirely different. Kick the bucket means to die. So every idiom has a story behind it. That's another thing. So it is not there simply. So it's raining cats and dogs. If we say it's raining cats and dogs, it means it rains heavily. With earlier, there's a story, as I said, there's a story to every idiom. So when there was flood everywhere in a particular point of time, even the, cat, the uh, dogs and the cats, they were uh, washed away by the rain and then mm, it seemed like it was raining cats and dogs. And to be a cat on the wall is another uh, familiar expression where we get the meaning just by the expression itself. To be a cat on the wall. Have you ever seen a cat on the wall? So it doesn't know to jump this way or that way. So what do we mean by that? You are in a state of dilemma, in a state where you are not able to take a decision, to take this decision or that decision. When you are in a state of doubt, you say you are a cat in the, on the wall. Don't be a cat on the wall. And then to let the cat out of the bag, so whole cat idioms or <laughs> dog idioms. To let the cat out of the bag means to let the secret out. 
how to speak English without grammatical mistakes is what the whole sessions are going to be about. So we cannot answer that question in a single sentence. As I said, there's a whole lot of work to be done around that. How to speak English without grammatical mistakes. And how do we begin? By making mistakes. That is the first step to begin with. And there's nothing uh, big about it. There's nothing wrong about it because everything new that is learned begins that way. We make mistakes, then we correct them. The important point to remember is not to make the same errors, same mistakes again. You are allowed to make new mistakes. <laughs> and then we correct those mistakes. And then there may come a point in time where you make less and less mistakes. And then a stage later on where you don't make any mistakes at all. This is, a, uh, this is the ultimate stage. And even people who are teachers who have been teaching for so long, even if they make mistakes, it's okay, as I said earlier, to err is human. And then the next moment, if you're conscious that you've made a mistake and then you apologize for that, and then you correct yourself, it's okay. The real mistake lies only when you don't know that you've made a mistake and when you're not ready to admit that you've made a mistake and when you keep arguing that what you said is right. So that is where we differ from the people who have been very successful in life. All the successful people in life, if you see, they would have made major big mistakes in life but they took the time and the effort to correct themselves and also the effort not to make the same mistakes again so that is what we have to do shall we do it together in all these classes to come i want your cooperation and you're free to post any number of questions you feel like asking and if time permits we will answer all those questions in a particular session or we will carry them forward to the next session. Right? Okay. See you in the next class. Thank you. Bye.